my boss was shekhar bajaj okay wow. but a lot of people can say that bajaj electrical true what i like most about him that see big people many times have absolute simplicity did you get a chance to meet him once you after you have after you left bajaj yes we met at goa at the airport first remark he said ki bilkul badle nahi ho waise hi ho jaise the indian system normally depends on brokers anything and everything you want to take a ration card you look for a broker you want to clear some consignment from customs you look for a broker now the situation is changing because things are becoming online all the brokers with due respect to what they have done have to convert themselves into knowledge partners today bangladesh is the second largest exporter of ready made garment went to uk in 2019 and a lot of stores the big brands when you see the t-shirt it's made in bangladesh yes and there is a reason for it bangladesh is least developed country status and therefore they have duty free quota free access in developed markets so when you import something of bangladeshi origin the importer has not to pay custom duties there's a loophole actually the product becomes it's not a loophole it's okay. a well thought of strategy Bye. so that ldcs can take part in the global world the best advice you have received from anyone for sure what would that be sky is too big you are a bird you can fly and remember that no footprints are left so nobody is likely to follow you you're not supposed to follow anyone hi everyone welcome back to a brand new episode of the math therapy sessions podcast our guest for today is mr sudhakar kasture he is a well known international trade consultant with over 40 years of experience in the field of imports and exports he heads exim institute which imparts training in the field of international trade the audio podcast is available on spotify and anchor the links to that and the description down below drop a like if you like this video and consider subscribing if you end up loving it and also don't forget to comment down below your thoughts on the podcast till then enjoy the episode so mr kasture what attracted you towards foreign trade it's very interesting mm-hmm. my job initiated me into this subject okay your job as a as a executive in bajaj mm-hmm. i started reading and i had an analytical mindset so i started analyzing mm. my boss liked it and then he said this is one subject where people are finding it difficult okay. think of those days mm. 1974 when there was no foreign exchange back, reserves 40 years back and we were not in the global footprint per se true so that is how it started mm. and the trade was to a great extent governed by regulations mm. it was not something that you can just do it number of regulations number of compliances mm. so it required analytical skills it simultaneously required how are you going to help your company mm. to increase their exports and it was during those days it was more or less an exclusive function for few common people were not really interested in import export activities so that's how it started so basically your boss identified a loophole in the system where there was a lack of someone who uh, you know there was a requirement basically no he simply said look this is bible for the exporters foreign trade policies of bible start reading mm. start reading start understanding start implementing question was it trusted me because i was a basically i was a graduate of english literature and philosophy true true so what but my language was good mm. so probably he felt i may understand it better than anybody else so were you okay uh, with the whole idea of become uh, getting into for because you know prior to that it may not have crossed your mind to become one so only when he said there is a potential there so when he said when he like told you that and when you started reading about it did it attract you immediately or it took time uh, to absorb the whole uh, it took time it was a new subject mm-hmm. something which i had never done earlier when you enter into a new subject as a student what do you really need if you ask me the question only one thing you require is deep interest in the subject mm. that i had any subject that was given to me prior to that or subsequently mm. 
I was very deeply interested in doing it. Mm. So, start studying, start working, and those days were different. You learn. You learn by practicing. You learn by studying on your own. Right. It wasn't so much of external guidance that is given to you. Mm. Maybe you can ask queries, but otherwise you learn. So, so how hard was it to become a foreign trade consultant during that time? I mean, I'm no. I never thought of becoming a foreign trade consultant when I was working. Okay, this idea came to me in 1980, after six years of working. Okay, by then I had understood what are the intricacies the policies. of policies, mm. and my boss was very happy with me. Mm. So he sent me to Europe. Mm. When I went to Europe, I realized for the first time that even if you don't have money. still you can dream about something big that's how it start mm. then what are the subject that you can do for example you are a doctor what will you do if i ask you to do some independent business you will think of something which is connected to your heart right and think about that mm. in a similar fashion now take simple example you are a dentist you might feel like manufacturing electric brushes mm. similarly i thought okay what can i do best and what can i do best is i can become a consultant right. why because there is no family background there is no money so you have to be purely looking at what expertise you have and how can you use that expertise to help somebody grow in business hmm. so that's how it started so according to you what's the best part about being a foreign trade consultant it was very interesting that uh, for the first time you are invited to a party somewhere in a five star hotel mm-hmm. and you meet someone he say how come you are here yeah right. and then you say yes you are here because of the work mm. and then people surprise so the how ad- can you how can you yeah so the add ons to the whole uh, occupation is the be- according to you is the best part because people don't ex- like you know don't expect you to be there and yes. just because of you know yes your profession you because know, of the profession yeah. yes and uh, suppose uh, someone wants to become a foreign trade consultant right now is it still a viable career option in it's to- still a viable option provided there are certain things which have completely changed mm-hmm. today's society today's field of working is purely based on technology okay for example you need to understand what is blockchain you need to understand what is electronic documentation mm. you need to understand the change priorities you need to understand the impact of climate change and then you decide about the trade policy so if you are really good at all these subjects you have a value so you, you have a great value so the onus has to be also on general knowledge and yes. on a daily basis knowledge which is going to impact the trade in the future or in, in the present in future in present both both i'll both. give you one simple example of this hmm. we are negotiating free trade agreements with various countries of the world right you know what is the chance of finally getting into negotiation it will be approximately with 136 countries mm. including one big continent called africa where we may have one agreement in future for 54 countries so if you are getting exposure and possibilities of increasing your business right in 136 countries of the world mm. then that is something which is worth looking forward true 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 i mean the potential is endless yes uh, what qualities according to you are needed to become a good f- foreign trade consultant ah interesting mm. of course my my way of thinking differs first is ethics ethics professional ethics don't ever say anything which is lie mm. don't ever say anything because it profits someone mm. be true to your knowledge number one secondly the potential our global footprint is very very small with a country probably a sixth largest population in the world mm. our contribution to export is only 2% mm. now a country like china exporting something like uh, 2500 billion dollars we have recently crossed 420 mm. 
So at least we should think of thousand billion, which right. is our target for two thousand twenty. Trying to reduce the difference between the two, right? Then take a small country like Germany, mm. where exports are close to fifteen hundred billion dollars. So this is something that we need to really grow, mm. and we need to learn from even smaller countries like Korea, Vietnam, the way they have grown, Bangladesh. Mm. Today, Bangladesh is the second largest exporter of ready-made garments. When you say Bangladesh, so uh, I, I went to UK in 2019, and a lot of stores, the big brands, when you see the T-shirt or uh, clothing, basically, it's made in Bangladesh. Yes, and that was shocking. Yes, there is a reason for it. Bangladesh is least developed country status, mm. and therefore they have duty-free, quota-free access in developed markets. So when you import something of Bangladeshi origin, the importer has not to pay custom duties. So there's a loophole. Naturally, the product becomes. It's not a loophole. It's okay. a it's a well thought of strategy, hmm. so that LDCs can take part in the global world. Okay. Otherwise, they'll never be able to do that. Hmm. So there is an opportunity. So one was ethics. Second was um, you know having an opinion about everything. So. any other qualities yes your knowledge base hmm. are you really connected to the trade hmm. are you really understanding what is trade are you prepared to take that trouble today if i have to write one article right or i have to make one presentation you will not believe hmm. i i start working maybe 10 days in advance and i continue working till the last night tomorrow i have to say something so i will work because i know something new will come right I made some presentation day before yesterday. Tomorrow I want to. I'll never copy the same because mm. I know in last two days also something must have come in. Mm. So if you are really update in terms of knowledge, that would be a great way of looking mm. at it. Any funny incident you would like to share with us, which has happened in your profession in your last four decades of your. Very interesting was one organization called Mangalore Refineries. Mm -hmm. I was interacting with them and then. we had almost six meetings mm. and there was a large discussion going on because they were going for expansion and i was proposing one scheme to them mm. which could have saved roughly 400 crore rupees and there was a lot of discussion going on lot of questions answers things like that mm. and then as usual it normally when there are multiple stakeholders you have different kind of opinions Being, coming yeah. from people it was very interesting and at the end of the sixth session then the finance director it was very interesting he asked me you need to be paid also na <laughs> after I said, this is a project of national interest payment will come i'm not <laughs> worried about it <laughs> so very interesting that yes if money is a by product for you mm. then probably mm. things follow so that's one interesting lesson that but I you need learned. to have a um, Lot of patience too. Yes. Like, uh, like when you said your sixth meeting, and that's the time he spoke about money. In today's time, first meeting, second meeting, and that's when people directly ask, "What about my money?" Yeah, yeah. I understand it's it's different for everyone, but then in, especially in a field like yours, you need a lot of patience too. I think. No, I am different in that sense because money was always a byproduct for what I was doing. Mm -hmm. It was never my. But is having patience field. an important factor? to becoming a good uh, foreign trade consultant according to you any good consultant any good person who really want to contribute to the world hmm. never will look at money as first priority take all the big people hmm. take jrd tata he has to be a contribution to the world true true so you mean when you are contributing to the world money will come Yes. One way or it the other. It is a byproduct, right? It has to be a byproduct. Mm. See, why do we grow forests? Why are we worried about climate change? For the reason is very simple. We want to protect. Mm. We don't think of money. And If a, let me ask you a very interesting question. If you are a farmer, mm. how many times will you think of money? of course money is badly needed by you mm. but at the end of the day you know that yes there are number of things on which this is dependent mm. 
Look at Russia, Ukraine. Mm-hmm. What do you think of Ukraine? Question mark. Something can get disturbed overnight. What will you do? You feel can so. money help? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, money has been pouring in a lot from yeah. all different parts, yes. but it's it's still not helping still out. Still doesn't help. So it's again goes back to your original thinking mm-hmm. as to how you think about the whole, right? And that is a very important factor when if you want to become a foreign trade consultant because there are a lot of factors involved, There's a lot of countries involved, a lot of governments involved, and no, one fundamental difference I can tell you. Indian system normally depends on brokers. Mm-hmm. Anything and everything. You want to take a ration card, you look for a broker. Mm-hmm. You want to clear some consignment from customs, you look for a broker. Now the situation is changing because things are becoming online. Mm-hmm. So all the brokers, with due respect to what they have done, have to convert themselves into knowledge partners. And that is a completely different story. If you are a knowledge partner, yes, it is going to help you. Now, let me give you one simple example of this. You go for taking a passport. Mm. Now, the system is, you go visit. There is a person sitting. He knows everything. He right. fills all the documents. He gets it checked. Mm. And then he says, okay, done, go. Then only verification is left. Sooner or later, that will also go. Mm. I am sure well, it will happen on online yeah. and you will receive your passport right and you will not have to spend any money whatever money you spend for that would be in the form of fees hmm. and that is perfectly acceptable but then the old passport agent and the current passport agent if you look at it from that angle old passport agent has no role hmm. because you are not going anywhere you are not to visit anyone hmm. this is happening in international trade right and that's something similar what I faced during getting a driving license. Early, uh, outside the RTO, we used to have those, I mean, we still do, but we used to have a lot more uh, driving, uh, you know, license agents. And, and now when you go out of the RTO, there are hardly few left. True. It's all become mainstream and online. So uh, that was, say, like the good part. What's like the harsh reality or the dark side of on the not so good part about being a foreign trade consultant, according to you? No, there, there, there are no moments of regrets per se. Mm-hmm. But then I can tell you very honestly that it is because of pursuit of knowledge. Mm-hmm. The whole idea comes from what you would like to learn. Right. And how fast would you like to learn? How sincere you are about learning? Mm-hmm. Then everything comes automatically. See, knowledge is one area if you can really help people using the knowledge properly and in a legal manner, it increases your credibility. Mm. And credibility brings everything. Mm. It brings business, it brings people. Mm. Everything goes along with credibility. So that's something. As long as... uh, And I have been able to do so. so. Mm. But still, like, uh, you have been... You know, uh, a, a part of it since a lot of year, years now, but s- someone who wants to become a foreign trade consultant, I think they should also know, like every other profession, there is also a, uh, you know, not a dark side, but more like a sad side of, you know, becoming a foreign yeah, trade consultant. Yeah, you may not become successful at all. Okay. That is because, not because there are no possibilities, mm. just because you don't know what exactly need to be done. Mm. And it's very interesting to see. I have seen it in many, many ways. Mm. That we start believing we have learned. That's the biggest problem. A true person never believes that he has learned. He is a student forever. Every single minute he is a student. Mm. If you have that attitude live in you, Mm. you will be a good consultant. If you start believing, now I know, then you are going to repeat And repetition is something not required in international trade. Because international trade is something offering you challenges every single day. Right. Mm. Simultaneously, this is one area where business will never stop. Mm. It will simply not stop. Mm. I was reading one article yesterday that 
cotton production in India may be subjected to limitations this year. Mm. Now, cotton is one commodity which is not grown across the globe. Right. Maybe 15 countries, 16 countries. So, it's a very precious commodity. Mm. Now, suppose you don't have. Will the world stop at that? They'll go to Egypt. They'll buy cotton from there. Mm. This happened with Ukraine. Ukraine is one major country uh, supplying wheat and sunflower oil. But world doesn't stop. Okay. If you can't supply sunflower oil, I'll have to find out some other ways and means. Somebody else will get that business. True, true. So international trade is the only business that never stops. Mm. Now You keep on finding alternatives. You keep on finding alternatives. So, uh, you know, in your, say like last four decades, five decades of, you know, foreign trade policy, what are the changes you have seen happening in front of your eyes, say like from the 1970s to today? Yeah, I can definitely tell you three things. Mm -hmm. One, prior to 1991, international trade was not a focus. We were known only for suppliers of raw material components. That's it. Mm. 1991, with economic reforms, we started emerging as software people, software expertise. Mm. Our service exports increased. Mm. Our goods export increased. And the focus of the government changed. Mm. It was much more protective at that point of time. The organization was also known as Chief Controller of Imports and Exports. Mm. Then it is reworded, Director General of Foreign Trade. Mm. So focus had changed. Then comes 2000 plus 2001-2002 where the speed of communication increased tremendously. Impact of technology increased tremendously. Mm. So the whole businesses have taken a new turn. Then comes 2016 Mm. where in World Economic Forum we have created a new terminology called Industry 4.0. And the wording of Industry 4.0 is critically important. It says this changes the way human live work and interact with each other. So, 4-0 as in 40? No. No. It is fourth industrial revolution. Okay. Okay. So, industry 1-0, industry 2-0, industry 3-0, industry 4-0. Okay. 4.0. Okay. So, today we are saying, okay, everything is changing. Take medical. Mm. Now, you are using robots for surgeries. Surgeries. True. Will it reduce the cost? No. Yes, it will reduce the cost. But, it, but going in the future, right? Comparatively, it reduce the cost compared to a surgeon, compared to a person, physical will... person operating and right. a robo operating. Hmm. But cost right. will reduce. Yes. I'm sure of that. I have examples of this that hmm. cost drastically reduces. Hmm. A surgeon may charge 35,000 rupees. The cost for robo may be 3,500 rupees. Hmm. Now, you don't see it today. What about tomorrow? What about five years down the line? That's true. Yeah. Look at telephones. The way mobiles have changed. Mm. Now, one mobile has so many features. You don't don't require a camera. You don't require a calculator. You don't require any other memory. Everything comes in one small. And now the phone is is the last option in in a mobile phone. There are people who don't use the mobile phone for a phone. I'll give you one more very interesting aspect. In Sweden, Mm. they put... The chip in your hand below your skin. Mm. It's like injecting. Right. And then you can open the lock right. of your house. Mm. Just putting your... That is the future. No, it is current. Yeah. No, I'm saying... It, it, current. For India, it may be future. But mm. in Sweden, 15,000 people have already undergone this. Wow. So, the world is changing so fast. Mm. You never thought of reaching England in 9 hours. Now you reach. Yeah, true. true. Tomorrow it will be 4 and a half hours. Mm. Always possible. Mm. So technology has changed. It has changed the way we work. And if you really want to be a good consultant, you have to understand this also. Mm. So artificial intelligence, blockchain, other areas, technology orientation. Mm. If you understand, explain it to people, they'll respect you. Your business will grow. Mm. So, speaking about um, 
यू नो फोर पॉइंट ओ वॉट आर द करंट गवर्नमेंट पॉलिसीज विच आर लॉट ऑफ पीपल आर अनअवेयर ऑफ बट द एक्चुअली वेरी हेल्पफुल so if you can you know shed some light on yeah, that two two things are immediately coming mm-hmm. one is a program called odop odop one district one product okay so for all 700 districts 700 products are already identified by the government mm-hmm. these are the products which has export potential okay and huge export potential and these are all agricultural produce primary so something like mangoes from ratnagiri yes. mangoes grapes onions whatever you talk of okay keeps on happening mm-hmm. and second they are trying to develop district hubs mm-hmm. now district hubs if they really want to make it successful the chamber of commerce at each district level has to take into account mm-hmm. the possibilities there has to be skill development and education and i have suggested this to the government why can't you use the infrastructure of post offices mm. for e-commerce exports mm. so that directly you give him a scanner let him check let him export mm. reduce the complexities in exporting so these two moves are something which would be greatly helpful it will also generate employment at the local level mm. people are not really aware of aware of it. they have True. heard of it but they are not really aware of so has those two programs been implemented or are they going to they be implemented are, soon they are being implemented okay and the detailing will come in the next policy which okay. is expected in the month of september 2022 okay next month mm-hmm. that's that's, that's yeah, very yeah. close that's, yeah, that's very next. close yes mm-hmm. and that's something which you believe in that will actually help a lot of you know uh you know people in india to uh, help it in export exporting their goods or improving their products and you know just exporting it out to the world uh, like you are giving an example of of someone from you know like how we have e-commerce websites so uh, when someone becomes a foreign trade consultant they also have an option of becoming a foreign trade office or something like that yes they, it's their choice okay so it's something like this uh, can a lawyer become a judge mm-hmm. yes mm-hmm. something like this a consultant can himself become an entrepreneur tomorrow mm. if he has support system from his family or from friends so so he will play an important part in the odop yes, and yes, everything yes i'll give you one very interesting example how many nris are there abroad do you have any idea <laughs> i mean i don't have a figure is roughly 2 crore okay think of each one buying only 100 dollar worth of goods from india through his friends mm. using e-commerce it could be any any it could be a, hmm. it could be a wedding dress right if you are in south it could be a lungi hmm. how much can we increase our global footprint and then you think of the friends of those 2 crore people abroad so e- e-commerce what is the greatest advantage of e-commerce the product reaches you directly at your home hmm. so if this is understood and each district plays some important role in this is a great potential to grow mm. and it's a huge uh, business because our target from for 2027 is 1000 billion dollars now 1 billion at the current rate 79 rupees 65 paisa if you take mm. per dollar it is 7965 crore rupees mm. equivalent to 1 billion we are talking of increasing 600 So six hundred into eight thousand crores, mm. that could be the size of business. Right. How much employment it will generate in India? So you that's challenge. A, yeah, that's a. I mean, a crazy potential there. Yes. So if someone say like, in the healthcare system, doctors, dentists, paramedics, so how how, or what will be the role of a foreign trade consultant? Uh, I mean, how does it impact us, the healthcare professionals? It's very interesting. I'll just give you one live example of this. If you look at the free trade agreement we entered with Japan, mm-hmm. there is a special provision made mm-hmm. for healthcare services. So what Japan says, I will give you work visa. 
for healthcare workers. Okay. The reason is very interesting. They have population, senior population, more than 80, lots of people, but they don't have people to serve them. Hmm. And you will not believe if I tell you the remuneration. A nurse in India gets anywhere around 20,000 rupees. Hmm. The remuneration in Japan for a nurse is $20 per hour. Wow. So if she goes there only on three years visa Mm. and she sincerely worked 10 hours a day, Mm. can you imagine how much saving she can bring back home? Mm. Probably she is not going to get that saving even after 30 years of working. True. Absolutely not. So healthcare workers, yoga teachers, Mm. English teachers, Mm. music teachers, a special work, a special paras have been created in service Mm. exports from India to Japan. Now think of Africa. What kind of medical services we can give to Africa? Then think of, what do they think about us? Hmm. We have a good uh, reputation. True, as doctors. Hardworking people. Right. Everything positive. Hmm. Can we explore this? Hmm. Of course, yes. Now, import of equipments, medical equipments. How many people know that medical equipments can be imported at a concessional rate of duty by using schemes of foreign trade policy. Hmm. I mean, I did not Hardly any. True. There is a scope for developing these kind of things. New products, new innovations, Hmm. both ways. You can expand your pharmaceuticals. So any any doctor who wants to start his own business or wants to become an entrepreneur or wants to uh, start importing stuff... uh, you know, should look at it. Mm. We have a free trade agreement with Japan. We have free trade agreement with uh, Korea. We are negotiating agreement with European Union. We are negotiating agreement with UK. We are negotiating agreement with Canada. Because mm. that's one thing which uh, I think scares a lot of doctors is the import duty, the custom duty. But they should get in touch with a foreign trade consultant and know the system. Yes, yes. Because there are provisions there which... So, for hospitals mm-hmm. or for R&D purposes, there are notifications issued by custom mm-hmm. where duty is not payable. At all? Yeah. Okay. With complete exemption. I mean, we did not That's know that. That's what I'm saying. That nobody wants to actually... See, what happens? We start working in silos. That's the biggest trouble. We don't think of the entire universe first. Mm. We should think on those lines first, that how it is going to impact, in what way it is going to impact. Based on that, we should do it. Right. Right. Good scope. Not only for import of goods. So say like, for me, I'm a dentist. I want to start my own toothpaste company or toothbrush, like you said, toothbrush company. So, I should ideally get in touch with a foreign trade consultant, know where it's the manufacturing is done, the license is required. So, everything will be handled by a foreign trade consultant. Yes. Even if he doesn't handle, he can give you a complete worksheet. Got it. As to what stepwise you are supposed to do, what benefits are you going to get. Mm -hmm. And that is something critically important. Right. right. So, at the start, you mentioned something about, uh, you know, your boss. So... Your, those six years you were in Bajaj, the Bajaj company. How did you get into the company? And Very good. Uh, my boss was Shekhar Bajaj. Okay. Wow. Not a lot of people can say that. Chairman of Bajaj Electricals. True, true. And a very nice gentleman. What I like most about him that... See, big people many times have absolute simplicity. Hmm. So I remember he, if he wanted to discuss something very interesting, he will not call me in his cabin. He'll come and sit in front of me. In your yeah. QB? Outside, in the hall. Okay. Just passing somewhere, he'll sit there five minutes, he'll talk something. Mm. So that is something critical. Mm. How you learn things. So my experience was extremely good. When I left my job, he asked me this question that, why are you leaving? Mm. Is it money? Are you getting any better offer from somewhere? Mm. I said, no, I wanted to be entrepreneur. That's why I'm leaving the job, not the reason. And I said, I asked him, give me one year. If I don't become successful in one year, I'll come back to you. Give me job once again. <laughs> and he was okay with that. He was okay with it. But how did you get into uh, the company? 
Oh, that was interesting. Purely by accident. <laughs> Would love to know. <laughs> uh, during those days, it's very interesting story. Seventy-two to seventy-four, mm-hmm. I was with Osho. I was a sannyasi for three years, mm-hmm. and then I left that, mm-hmm. and I came out, and I was supposed to go to Calcutta through Osho. Ha! Huh. For mm-hmm. some work. Yeah. But then, uh, you remember, it's an old story, George Fernandez and the railway strike. Right. So, all India railway strike. There was no railway. We couldn't go. Mm. So, I came to Mumbai. My uncle was working with Bajaj Group. Mm-hmm. So, he said, come to office. Mm. So, I came to office and uh, then he said, anyway, you're not doing anything currently. Why don't you do something, some work? Right. So maybe start at the... at the lowest level hmm. the junior executive kind of job clerical job so to start hmm. okay nothing right that's how it started so i mean when did you uh, meet uh, shikha bajaj like maybe on the fifth day fifth day itself and because I'd, and it's been about 6 years that from from then then yeah. 74 four, very close to him yeah and uh, Did you get a chance to meet him once you after you have after you left Bajaj? Yes. Did you get a chance to meet yes. him again? It was very interesting. We met at Goa at the airport, and very interesting. The first remark he said, "Ki bilkul badle nahi ho, waise hi ho, jaise the." That was a gap of twenty years. So you met him after twenty years, and <laughs> and it was very pleasing moment for me that he realized immediately, mm. and we talked as if we were. meeting very regularly and every day we had never been out of touch you felt like you never been out of never touch been out of so i think it's just the simplicity between two people which uh, stays with them even if you meet them after so many years they have formed memories of you know yes. each other's yes. yes simplicity that yes it's it stays with you yeah yeah so uh, how was the whole experience working at the bajaj company very good it was first very interesting aspect that there was a lot to learn mm-hmm. there was no barrier for learning and all my people were helpful so you want to do something you want to take up some responsibility mm-hmm. so they were prepared to help me out i remember when i went uh, abroad my first europe trip there was one saturday sunday so through the bajaj Bitcoin. company only yeah, event yeah. okay so one of my vice president mr dhiru sampat mm. he told me why don't you go to paris mm. now think of this is the story of 79 mm. and paris at that time was something maybe it was a wish of everyone that some day i should go to paris now also it's it's now a wish also, of yes. million like a lot of people so back then and then i asked him ki sir but i have no work I have a three weeks program planned, and there is no buyer, no seller, nothing, nothing to do in Paris. He said, "No, no, I am not asking you to work. You have lot of cultural interest, other interest. So why don't you go, mm. stay two days?" Mm. And he arranged for it. How did you feel when you were told that you know, like you are going to go to Europe and Paris for the first time? If you it can, it was can... something I. i never imagined mm-hmm. because during those days only senior most people vice president presidents executive directors directors used to go to europe mm-hmm. so why do you think you were chosen by them for because my performance was extremely good okay so they said you deserve this mm-hmm. and it was a new line we were thinking of expanding and there was a international exhibition mm-hmm. in germany the idea was that you participate in that exhibition and then from there you travel in europe meet some people see what is the possibility how can we expand this business and how was your europe experience very good extremely good A- extreme any memories or anything which you can share with us with yeah italy okay italy is one place i liked most switzerland was another place i like most mm-hmm. and then very very interesting that you know it's a it's a completely different kind of exposure you must have met a lot of interesting people too yes and did your foreign trade uh, knowledge help there yes i remember one state uh, one place in switzerland mm-hmm. 
where I had gone there and mm. what I liked about it the punctuality the way they treat you mm. so I was supposed to travel from Geneva by train mm-hmm. I took the train my counterpart the person who was supposed to receive me asked me which train you are going to take mm. and you will not believe that the driver who was supposed to receive me he was standing exactly in front of my bogey on the platform mm. i have not to search in it and i went then we had a discussion mm. we had lunch and in lunch he said uh, whatever you want to know about this particular aspect all information i can tell you here itself we have all those details okay and they were looking at having a office in uh, switzerland and uh, catering to the turkish market okay and it was so very interesting to know that a small group of 10 people can really update at this level mm. that inspired me and this was way back in 1970s yes so that's that something which was very very interesting any other countries you visited uh, you met interesting people um, everywhere did, did, did you uh, get a chance to go to uk because that's the only country i have been yeah, to yeah, so no, i have been to about 20 25 countries so far mm-hmm. no during that trip during that trip yes it didn't happen at that point of time it happened in 1997 98 okay okay again i went to europe and uh, very interesting story i was sitting in a restaurant in paris mm-hmm. and there was a waiter he didn't have lot of work there was nobody mm-hmm. so we sat and how it helps you to understand things we started talking and then i spoke about a person called roger mila mm. roger mila was a football player from cameroon mm. this waiter was also from cameroon okay he was so happy that i knew roger mila mm. and roger mila was one person that when you make a goal now it is you see that people go in the corners start and dancing he started yeah. that okay he was so happy then we discussed about cameroon for about one and a half hour mm. he was free i was also free and i can honestly tell you arif i have never learned about cameroon what i have learned in those <laughs> one and a half hours so but how who will teach you you never know same thing happened in barcelona mm. knowing my interest about art and culture the buyer there said uh, you want to see something uh, younger days of picasso picasso yeah that also happened like this that we started talking about salvador dali <laughs> and he was so happy i knew about salvador dali so he said you must be knowing picasso so there is a when picasso was nana picasso small fellow small picasso yeah. he had done some paintings and there is a, there is a place where you can go and see it so shall i take you there mm. No, but very interesting. But you need to know about other countries. That's what I believe. You can't go in other countries and not know Now about. Now I can tell you something. How it differs mm. in approach. If you are in UK, if you are in USA, and you want to do business with India, mm. or you want to do business with Vietnam, they have departments to tell you how you should grow in business. right from culture etiquettes mannerism mm. food habits mm. so before the person comes here he knows everything about Bonus, you yeah our problem is different we are always interested in negative things go to germany ask about what do you think about hitler now he doesn't want to answer that question right. doesn't right. like it right why should you do that instead you talk about something new mm. ask about angela merkel mm. think about something but then we believe in one part we don't believe in exhaustive learning so my suggestion to anyone you must learn in totality you should broaden your horizon yeah, broaden your horizon you you mentioned uh, osho and he's like a cult figure a, a legend himself uh, and has i mean one of the largest followings in the world right now so can you like share your experience with yeah, osho yeah it was very interesting i met him first when i was in polytechnic in amravati Okay that's old story mm-hmm. this must be about uh, 68 69 mm-hmm. and he came for some lectures he was not named as osho at that time he was named as rajnish mm-hmm. acharya rajnish and i liked him in the first lecture so he came to your college 
to give a lecture i heard him okay then he was there two days i was running after him all two days I left college etc just running after him wherever he goes i used to go okay so wherever he was giving yeah. a lecture you went after yeah. him yeah i liked it so much hmm. there was a inner thinking that i want to search something hmm. my financials were very very bad at that point of time i had no money hmm. so one day i finally decided that look i want to go and learn from this fellow and be with him I didn't do anything I simply walked in. I came to Mumbai, mm-hmm. staying in Woodland Apartments at Peter Road. I walked in and I said Acharya ji main aaya hu aur main wapas nahi jaunga. That's it like that you just walked in. <laughs> and you will not believe his answer. Yeah. <laughs> his answer was main tumhe keh bhi nahi raha hu ki wapas jao. Raho. Then he gave me a letter you join a kirtan mandali mm-hmm. in Ludhiana. Okay. I had no money to go to Ludhiana maybe 20 rupees in my pocket so I went to a friend of mine in mine in Manmad he bought me a ticket and what I learned biggest thing from Osho is living in insecurity he taught us this so you have to live in insecurity okay what they used to tell us is this look you sell the books okay Osho books okay. you will get 30% commission mm mm-hmm. that commission you have to use for your living mm. we were a group in kirtan mandali 10 13 15 sanyasis mm. all from across the globe right so you do kirtan and things like that and then spend time learn learn so how was it working uh, i mean you know doing kirtan with people from all over the world yes because a lot of foreigners must be there yes. i was blessed because my english was good mm. so everybody used to talk to me. automatically they used to tell me number of things from their countries mm. and every 3 months we used to come back to bomb to bomb no one meditation camp for 10 days mm. maybe at mount abu wherever he is taking camp that place we will and they, those 10 days we will spend osho will give us time mm. we used to discuss things it was more like a friend philosopher guide so what attracted you towards his whole philosophy simple because he was one person who is prepared to discuss he was one person who never said this is final mm. he was one person who respected your individuality for me he was a great teacher mm. and i was very lucky in my childhood or during my entire process mm. i had extremely good teachers when i was in polytechnic my teacher dr kade was chairman of einstein foundation india of you, india ha huh? you can imagine what kind of input he could give yeah. mm. then narhar kurunkar from nanded another great person and osho so learning reading books attending camps moving around taking life lessons mm. and one fine day i said look i think i have learned i should do something no problem and that's when he decided to leave yeah so how how it was very interesting when i told him he says okay no problem yeah i was going to ask you how easy was it to leave because it was difficult as, okay <laughs> very difficult mm. because mindset normally in india is this that once you take something then you stay mm. for me it was a great transformation because i used to wear all those saffron clothes now mm. giving all that you start working you start taking pant shirts and things like that what you was your family's that. reaction to it when you joined family the- was very upset at the beginning mm-hmm. my father was not interested in anything of this sort but mm-hmm. i was honest enough i told him that look this is something my inner voice wants me to do and i'm not leaving you permanently mm-hmm. maybe if i'm satisfied with this i'll come back mm-hmm. because when you hear someone say I'm becoming a sanyasi for a parent i mean i'm, yeah, yeah, I'm not born yet but you it's know extremely just to lose a uh, loved one someone yes, who you yes. have helped grow i do then, understand and then they say you know i'm becoming a sanyasi so i understand his but then did, did he uh, after working with osho was he okay with the fact that you have become one no uh, it was something compulsive for him hmm. like you don't have option the child has gone has gone 
Now only hope is he'll come back someday because he promised he'll come back someday. And that happened after three years mm-hmm. when I decided to leave Osho and start life once again. Mm-hmm. Any special memory of Osho which you would like to share with us? Yeah, very, very interesting one. Uh, when he used to look at me, I used to feel that I am the only person in the world he loves. Okay. That looking at so, so concentrated and so strong and so affiliated and God knows what it was. Mm-hmm. But then next moment he starts looking at the book or some painting or something else. I used to feel that now he belongs to that painting. So that transformation of eyesight from one place to another place was 100%. Hmm. Second part I learned from him, very good teaching as such. He said, look, Hindi mein kaha tha, har panchi urta hai. Kisi panchi ke padachinna nahi chutte. In true sense, you will not be able to follow anyone. But I can tell you one thing. Mm. You are also a bird. You can also fly. Mm. And sky is too big. It mm. can accommodate all of us. Mm. I have not seen this kind of honesty. Where you have such clarity of thought. Mm. And my personal experience is extremely good. I have handwritten letters of him written to me. Mm. So... It was a great experience for me. I think they are worth in millions now. <laughs> if because some anything from Osho is yeah, I have I have mm. preserved them. But any anything which you know um, which attracted you the most about him one was like the whole spirituality thing has has it helped you right now in in your day to day life yes. after you left Osho yes is it still helped. Yes, two things. His teaching that live in insecurity. Mm-hmm. He actually used to tell us whatever money left in your pocket on the last day of the month, distribute every first of the month, be without money. See how it functions. Mm-hmm. Wasn't it weird for you to like do that initially? No. no? Because the living itself was very joyful. Mm-hmm. And it was living in the present. Not thinking for the past, not thinking for the future. Sure. So that was great. Secondly, the confidence that you can do things. Mm. Third, you never... To, you have to go from houses to... Uh, no impositions. Mm. Nothing. No, but you have to be... You have to put yourself out. You have to go talk to people. Yeah. I used to deliver lectures in colleges. Mm-hmm. I used to go to anybody's place. I remember in Saharanpur... In the early morning, I saw a board collector, district collector. I walked with the books. Mm. And you will not believe he bought books from me. Because mm. I hear Swamiji Baiti. Mm. You know, because you think of at that particular point of time, the person who is not talking of a particular religion, mm. the person who is talking of consciousness, right? the person who is referring the world. Mm. I got attracted to Zen Buddhism because of Osho. I started learning about Lao Tzu because of Osho. Mm. So how was people's response when you were walking through villages, towns and different places? Very good. Very extreme. Mm. Very loving and very discouraging both ways. Okay. (laughs) Any any memory of that? You can't live in this dharmshala. You have to quit. You are nonsense people. You should be thrown out. You should be beaten. Mm. One hand. On the other hand, you are most loving. Mm. So, both both kind of experiences. So, you have, I mean, you have known Osho for, say, like, four or five years, so closely, You've worked with him. Did you realize he would become so big in the in, in the next coming future, say, the 1980s? Yes, yes. Did you, you expect that? Whether you will be part of it or not is a completely different story. Right, but then but did you yes, expect that he will become, become a big, global that phenomenon? Was known, that was known. Hmm. I had, fortunately, I had developed that eyesight, insight. I, I respected him throughout my life. Any news coming against him never disturbed me. Hmm. I never even tried to argue. Hmm. I've never done that. Because for me, what matters is my own experience. And that was extremely good. Right. Extremely good. Because he has a polarizing view in, in the current world. 
and if people know you have worked with osho they might assume something about him but now when you say ki no, it doesn't affect no, you no it doesn't affect you. because your personal experience was completely different to what is out there in the media or on the news or if you give him galis i will simply listen and say okay that's your view mm. the difference is i have experience you don't mm. you are hearing about him mm. i've seen him i've talked to him i've seen him as a person right matters a lot Also, a lot of celebrities joined him. Yes, yes. Uh, film stars. It was very interesting. You cannot imagine that that mm-hmm. you are sitting in this row next to you is uh, Mahesh Bhatt. After that, uh, Vinod Khanna. After that, Zina Tama. With me also, this happened. Mm. Like you, you are like. It happens. Mm. There is no thinking like this. That okay, next person sitting to you is Vinod Khanna, and he was a celebrity at that point of time. Right. In right. My life is full of such blessings. Mm. I worked with Yash Chopra. Mm. I'm a very good friend of Mr. Amin Sen. Mm. Lot of celebrities, lot of people from different areas. But in that ashram, everyone was equal. You did not yeah, feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did not feel. Oh, here's not a single question. Not a single question was asked. But then it's a very surreal experience just to think about it. That you're sitting and then bazu me, ye sab bade bade dikhte yeah, log bate yeah. hai, like you know. I mean, no. I know during those days or later part when ashram was set up in Pune, people used to come there only to see celebrities. <laughs> that will come for the day, visit the ashram, but spend I mean, some time around, so that I can see some people around. Hmm. So, how was a usual day in during that few years of yours? Like do meditation in the morning, mm-hmm. start working from nine o'clock onwards, work till about five o'clock, selling books, things like that. Again, get into meditation. Read something. Sleep. Simple. Sounds very simple, but then no uh, hard. You are working, no. Hmm. And what about the transportation? Like we used to go. Sometimes organizers used to do that. Sometimes we used to do ourselves. Sometimes we used to walk. Absolutely, no control on that. That's entirely yours. How you want to go about it. Any one quality which you learn there. Which has stayed with you till now? Awareness, awareness, and calmness. Yeah, calmness. I would agree. Accept with. things. Mm. Accept things as they are. Mm. So, when you say calmness, is it just mental calmness, or is it like physical calmness also? Both. So, how do you physically mental calm yourself? Physical calmness. The moment you realize that this is something unavoidable, mm. you accept it. Like. You undergo very simple. Search. Let me tell you. If it is raining very hard, what do you do? You don't go out. Fine. As simple as that. Mm. It's a feeling that you understand that it rains. The moment you start applying this to human beings, it's easy. Mm. Somebody gets very angry. Mm. Now I know he's frustrated, and I can see on his face that he's frustrated by a number of other reasons. So listen quietly to him. Mm. Don't react. what a good psychologist do so when you say physical calmness can it be applied say like when undergoing a surgery you know you're anxious your bp goes for like you know every parameter is high it doesn't happen my experience it doesn't happen mm-hmm. i had a practical experience i had a bypass in 2007 and then i had another cataract surgery so during cataract they said that look we have to monitor your pulse you have to monitor heart beats and everything bp mm-hmm. I said nothing will happen. Don't worry. Let's keep talking. Mm. We kept talking, and doctor, after forty-five minutes, told me that what you have said is exactly the same. Your heartbeat remains the same. Your pulse remains the same. Nothing changes. So, how do you achieve that? Say, like in today's time, if is it just through meditation or just like like no, you said, simple. awareness? Meditation also people have lot of misunderstanding about meditation. Meditation is not an act of doing. Mm. It is more act of being. If you are aware of your breathing, mm. if you can control your breathing, I think everything else will follow. As a doctor, you can understand this much better than anybody else. Right. All, all signs of any kind of uncomfortable feeling mm. impacts your breathing. True. You are angry. True. 
టు యూ బ్రీదింగ్ చేంజెస్ యూర్ హ్యాపీ యూర్ బ్రీదింగ్ చేంజెస్ సో విట్నెస్ యువర్ బ్రీదింగ్ మానిటర్ యూర్ బ్రీదింగ్ ఇట్స్ నాట్ యాజ్ డిఫికల్ట్ యాజ్ ఈస్ బీయింగ్ టాక్ అబౌట్ రైట్ ఇట్స్ బీయింగ్ ఓవర్ మీ యువర్ ఓన్ ఎక్స్పీరియన్స్ యూ హ్యావ్ ట్రీటెడ్ మీ ఫర్ మై డెంటల్ ట్రీట్మెంట్ హౌ మెనీ టైమ్స్ డిడ్ యూ ఫైండ్ మీ గెటింగ్ డిస్టర్బ్ బికాస్ ఆఫ్ సంథింగ్ నాట్ వన్స్ ఐ మీన్ యూ హ్యాడ్ a huge part of a tooth popped out and ideally any other patient would be in excruciating pain you were very calm you like ye nikal gaya abhi kya karna chahiye iska like you came when we did the filling there was absolutely nothing like it was very close to the pulp ideally it caused a lot of pain and i don't know how you stay calm <laughs> i mean that was um, that's one thing which has the the, the very first time we met a couple of years back so it's it, it, it's one burning question in my head kya bitna shant kaise rehte and especially when i've treated you i mean it's v- because uh, it's not a small filling or something a koi aur hota basically to wo uth ke chala jata but then you stayed calm yes and nahi hota hmm. because you accept it when you accept something in totality nothing happens hmm. but then physical pain is something which like, but like you said once you know you're aware of what is happening you stay calm you can deal better with it yes so uh, i have no anxieties like this like my doctor mm. who operated for my bypass mm. never seen me before i have not seen him before he saw me only in operation theater when i was under anesthesia mm. so i don't know who is he but i was not worried who is going to operate in fact we had a very interesting conversation with the anesthetist when he said i have to tell you this and then when he said that then you will go to sleep you will not remember anything i said don't tell me anything beyond that mm. what i am not going to remember why should i know from you <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know a major part of your say like calmness was the osho teachings but the major part of your simplicity was you growing up in a very difficult time in your chi- as a child so if you can share something about your childhood your early college life yeah because uh, that <clears throat> is inspiring and we would like to know more about it yeah i am a son of a postman mm-hmm. and i am extremely proud of my father he was a great man mm-hmm. and two things one i have never seen him missing his duties and i have never seen him irresponsible for example think of those days this is something uh, 1960s yeah. 6061 just got independence you receive a parcel because during those days postman was everything mm. he was reaching money orders he was receiving parcels things like that <laughs> you go to the person person is not there he'll hold the parcel he'll mm. once again go next day he never said that look here why should i bother if he's not there let it go back i don't care that was never the case second part he never created any value for money that was the greatest contribution that's, that's an interesting. interesting point ha huh. you know what he said he said do everything that you wish but let money not be central of it hmm. and it was very interesting for me and he taught lot many things from you will be surprised if you listen to my childhood story one day on diwali day i must be 8 years old mm. we walked into a in the city and there was some some fellow grocer shop owner he offered me some cashews mm. picked up some cashews this is diwali day so come and eat mm. my father said take it back you want to offer him give him a rawal gaur toffee naturally i felt bad about it that this fellow is giving me cashews my <laughs> father says give him a rawal gaur toffee a thing beyond that one chocolate mm. but what i told him subsequently that i remember even today mm. he said don't spoil his habits he should get what he deserves mm. he should earn what he wants to have mm. and you are not supposed to give me a gift because government give me salary mm. think of this coming from a postman in 61 saying this that right. i don't want anything from you don't give me anything to my child mm. so that probably has lasted throughout the life mm. and that was very interesting 
because when like when you when people hear that something like money is not important don't think about money don't run up don't run behind money don't create value for money people in today's time might assume that he's he's talking from a place of privilege but then it's not like that like right how you rightly put it if you don't make money the main core of it and treat it like a by product uh you know money will come yes when you don't make it the focus it comes but and when you make money the focus a lot of your ethics a lot of your other side things go for a toss so it's you have to create it's that it's very balance. interesting to see just remember one word hmm. the pursuit of money comes from one small word called greed hmm. are you greedy now the nature has made you in such a fashion can you eat 30 gulab jams not possible not possible your stomach will take it hmm. no it will disturb you hmm. yes yes so body teaches you that greed is not meant for you why you want to be greedy hmm. if you not greedy things will happen na hmm. today when i go to prithvi theater and see nasruddin shah acting hmm. i feel very happy hmm. he conveys something and it's not that he doesn't have money hmm. ha huh, he may not be having money as other people talk of yeah but even if you ask such people who have lot of money that do you have happiness in your life hmm. big question mark so what are you looking for hmm. all the money would buy happiness will it really hmm. but all happiness with less money okay what is your ultimate pursuit hmm. my feeling was as long as you are happy good enough right right so also your college life you mentioned something about not having 12th standard like that was something very new for me to yeah, even yeah, hear yeah, that yeah yeah in our days it was 11th so there was no 12th no 11th then pre university mm-hmm. then 3 years then you become graduate so ultimately it was 11 plus 4 okay 15 years now it is 12 plus 3 same story right so you 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 did your graduation in with subjects i started my career with engineering mm-hmm. i left it after one and a half years you left it i had no money mm-hmm. my father also had no money so we tried so that was the reason why that was the primary okay. reason <clears throat> then my professor told me that look you either take maths or you take philosophy because you are good at both mm-hmm. so i like philosophy then i went to osho then i completed my graduation while you were in osho yeah oh so externally externally okay and uh, you cannot match my qualifications because i am uh, how do you put it uh, you know people say higher second class then somebody say lower second class i am lower third class i passed my graduation with 39 and a half percent marks mm. half a percent additionally given by university as grace mm. but then those days were different yeah. after 20 years i completed my masters in foreign trade there i passed with distinction mm. but it never stopped me learning mm. and those days were lucky days where people were not looking at uh, what is your paper says mm. they are more looking at you what you can practically do mm. that's an interesting story so you know how looking back you have done so many things like you have joined dentistry left uh, sorry engineering left engineering joined philosophy worked with osho worked with the bajaj company started your own firm uh, you also have your own firm uh, i want to talk about that uh, so yeah. you became an entrepreneur le- it's a le- it's a consultancy firm plus mm-hmm. my deeper edu- deeper interest is in education so mm-hmm. we floated as a division exam institute we started in 1996 mm-hmm. today we have roughly 6000 students wow and skill development was done particularly for international trade that's the only subject i teach mm. that's the only subject i and then it has given me lot of opportunities i am currently faculty for most of the <coughs> export promotion councils mm. national academy of customs mm. now this monday i'm going to go to kolkata for west bengal program government program keeps happening mm. 
but that's core interest this was not something which you ever hope for but it's yes. happening this happened because you stuck to your yeah. core subject and yeah. my interest in teaching and some remembrance from my father mm. right tomorrow if you decide to teach make sure that it is economical Can anybody should be able to afford it our courses are far too small mm. in terms of money mm. we don't earn life is like a complete circle yes. like you know yes. what he said you are actually doing it and i am extremely happy mm. and teaching i mean did you ever thought you going to end up teaching yes i always thought i always wanted teaching. to become mm. even my last wish is that that i should die while teaching So, because there is nothing left in otherwise everything has been done i am already donated my body mm. everything is over there is nothing no rituals to be done nothing of that sort mm. that's all drafted completed all job is completed done so before i mean that's it's a lot uh, you know very rarely in today's time you get people like uh, people of your stature who think about a lot of different things like you know for it thought about it so uh, we'll we'll move to our last section which is our rapid fire section so i'm going to ask you a few questions you can try to answer as fast as possible or whatever comes to your mind first so if you were not a f- foreign trade consultant what would you be i will be a teacher in teach and what philosophy, philosophy. life anything okay. children okay. anything okay. one person who you always admired and would like to meet in the future meet in the future yeah like you always wanted to meet that person and you have not met him or her yet and maybe ratan tata okay any reason why i like him hmm. simple as that very simple some principles some i i really love that something similar some to some principle life right i want to do this i want to do this for this purpose mm. purpose is very definite in his mind what he wants to do mm. so i love that the best advice you have received from anyone for sure what would that be sky is too big you are a bird you can fly mm. and remember that no footprints are left so nobody is likely to follow you you're not supposed to follow anyone mm. that's that's profound one movie you can watch n number of times kafur naam kafur naam it's like. a turkish movie okay wonderful would i i it's available no kafur naam kafur would, naam would check it and uh, it talks about of a child mm-hmm. very interesting story you should you see would, it would definitely check it out uh, your current favorite book eknatheshwaran dhammapada Okay, and w- what is it about? Buddhism. Buddhism. The best book I have ever read, explaining Buddha what he is, and you will be surprised to know. Eknath Iswaran says, mm. considering his time, Buddha must be a doctor. That is something interesting <laughs> for you. <laughs> and you know he has given some reasoning for it. He says if you look at Buddha's teaching, they go the way a doctor goes: diagnosis, prognosis, things mm. like that. Wow! Like. should read that mm. it's a very interesting definitely book. definitely uh, one place you look forward to travel to you new always zealand. Look, new zealand new zealand yeah. i have not been there you have not been there uh, any i have travelled in us i have travelled in canada i have travelled in europe I that's one place to mauritius that's i have one, been to china but that's one place you would like to go to yes i would like to and is there any one place where you have already visited but you would like to keep going again and again because i like that place canada canada any place in india mm, number of places one the switch you come manali manali for that matter kurg also kurg so you love hill stations yes okay your favorite restaurant no i am not a fan of any restaurants per se but any one which you no i have a, a, any south indian or in restaurants you would like banana leaf banana leaf <laughs> I think that's an all-time favorite for, for the all the Andheri West yes, people. Yeah. Um, five things you can't leave your house without. You always carry once you leave your house, you always have it with you. 
always have with me a handkerchief okay that's one little money in pocket mm-hmm. mobile i not normally i don't carry don't it always no. no not always okay bus only two things i remember okay. practically so <laughs> five i don't remember so that's it and yeah. handkerchief and uh, some money. money yeah that that's is it. it that's it wow i mean you can i can you know imagine go, going out of the house without a watch or a mobile phone no watch i don't wear mm-hmm. because mobile has watch so mm-hmm. i'd stop doing that that's about it thank But you then, thank you so much for your time sikasturi and it was lovely having you on this um i think i learned the most in this out of all the podcasts i have i've done this is the most i've learned something uh, it's not my specialty but a lot about life a lot about other things not just about foreign trade policy but uh, and someone who has uh, worked with osho uh, so getting your perspective on different things even something like uh, you know how foreign trade policy can be incorporated with healthcare professions was something which i never thought i wanted to know but now i want to know more about it with signing of uh, free trade agreement with africa mm-hmm. lot many opportunities will open for doctors okay we'll look into it yeah. so hopefully we'll have a podcast soon where we talk about more about foreign trade policy related to healthcare professionals sure uh, soon so thank you for your time thank you so it's a privilege much. having you on this and we'll meet again soon thank you so much sure thank you then all okay ab sir for my i have no problem <laughs> <laughs> no, i don't know whether it was no but did you, you enjoy it yeah 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 of course yeah.